Hi everyone, welcome to another video in my How to Fix Into Plasterboard series. And today I'm going to be profiling an exciting new product that's recently hit the market. It's the Blade Fixer. Now, some of you might see videos like this and think this guy's getting loads of money for profiling this product. Well, sadly, my channel is too small for that. I recently got a message on Facebook from the inventor of this product asking if I would be prepared to do a video on it. I said I would in principle. So I haven't been paid to do this video, although admittedly the product itself was sent to me for free. So let's take a closer look. In the packet, this is a 10 pack, you get 10 of these blade fixers themselves. I'm gonna show you how to use those in a minute. And you get a load of five by, I think they're five millimeter, by 50 millimeter screws. You also get instructions on the back of the packet showing you how to insert the fixing into the plasterboard. And I'll be posting a link at the end of this video in the description tab to the various other videos online and on the Twitter page of the company itself showing you different applications of the product and how to use them. So unlike a lot of other fixings on the market where sometimes you need specialist drill bits, the beauty of this fixing is, as I'll be showing you in a minute, you literally just need a Stanley knife and the fixing itself to insert it into the plasterboard. And it's what's called a multiple screw fixing. It's the only multiple screw fixing on the market by which you can screw more than one screw into it to obtain a secure fixing into the wall. So let's get cracking. As I often do, I've constructed a mock-up piece of plasterboard so that you can see how the fixing works on the front and the back. So I'm gonna start off fixing a typical bracket to the wall. Obviously your wall will be plastered rather than just bare plasterboard, but the principle is exactly the same. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark on the wall the position, insertion point you like of the blade fixing itself. And then I'm just gonna, you don't have to do this, and the more you use this, the more you'll know how many of these holes uh, you need to mark. But just to demonstrate for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna mark on the wall all of the screw holes along the front of the blade fixer. I'm also gonna mark the width of the cut that we need to make in the plasterboard there like that. Now, when playing around with this fixing before doing this video, I've been experimenting with lots of different ways of creating the hole in the plasterboard with a multi-tool, uh, and I've even used my Leatherman pen knife. The beauty of this little gadget is the simplicity, actually, of inserting it into the plasterboard. You don't need a drill, you don't need a drill bit. All you need is a Stanley knife. Now, all we need to do is make a little horizontal cut in our plasterboard, and then at a 45 degree angle, you could do this accurately by using a combination of square and sliding bevel, but to be honest with you, it's just as easy to do it by eye. I'm gonna cut into the plasterboard at a 45 degree angle. Just to get the blade fixer going in a minute. I'm just gonna do that from the other side as well. Now, you just got the reasonably straightforward job of bending the blade fixer into the right shape so that we can insert it into the plasterboard. So, it's very, this is very straightforward to do. You see this hole here with the horizontal line on it that we marked earlier. That's where you make your first bend. Notice it's got cut marks on the back of the blade fixer. I'm gonna be bending into the cut marks. So I'm gonna bend that roughly at 90 degrees. Simply bend this around my finger and then I'm gonna leave it at that angle so that I can insert it into the plasterboard. So rather than using the blade, the blade fix that we've bent, I'm gonna take a new one out because it's like a ready-made tool. And I'm just gonna gently start inserting the blade fixer at an angle. I'm just wiggling, for want of a better word, the fixing through the plasterboard. It doesn't take long. And see now you can see I'm all the way through. And then looking from the back of the plasterboard, you can see it's just made a nice, neat little cut. So back to the front again. Now what we need to do is insert the blade fixing that we bent a few moments ago. Now this is the only slightly tricky bit and it's really not that tricky with a little bit of practice. So we've got it that far into the plasterboard. All I'm doing now is I'm just bending it up a little bit and then a little bit again so that we can fully insert it into the slot. Now I'm just simply bending it down and we're ready to start fixing it in. 
And that's really it. We're ready now to put up our hook or whatever it is. Looking again at the back of the plasterboard, the blade fixer is just pointing out at the 45 degree angle we saw earlier. Now before driving home your screws, you can do one of two things. You can leave this bottom flap in, or if you think it's going to be a little bit too obtrusive on the outside of the plasterboard, if your, for example, your hook's on show, you can snap off this bottom section. And I'm doing that now because that will enable me to insert my bottom screw, which didn't quite line up with the bottom section of the blade fixer. So I'm using here my electric screwdriver, but to be honest with you, you can also use a manual screwdriver. Simply insert the screw. Now at this point, you just got to remember to screw your screw in as straight as possible. The reason being that screw is now engaging in the back of the fixing. You can't quite see it engaging in the blade fixer here, so I'm just going to remove this section of the plasterboard at the back, just for the purpose of this video so you can see how it works. There we go. And as we tighten that screw, it's, it's self-tapping into the back of the fixing. And then you just want to, now we've got a lovely tight screw, you just want to hand tighten it, don't go berserk. Now this is the clever bit, so the second screw, I'm not even going to use my electric screwdriver here, I'm going to use a manual screwdriver. Now panning to the rear of the plasterboard, so you can see what happens at the back. You see that's now biting into the back of the blade fixer. and it's pulling the blade fixer tight with the back of the plasterboard. A couple of final turns on the screw and we've got ourselves a lovely secure fixing. Now the other obvious application would be for example putting up kitchen cabinets. So I've got a bit of so I've got a wooden batten here. I'm just going to mark some pilot holes. And let's see if I can line these up with the blade fixer. That works pretty well. So we've got ourselves a lovely secure fixing, which is also bang on horizontal. And taking a look at the back, we've got a lovely tidy fixing. So after all that, what do I think of the blade fixers? As this is a new product that's only recently come to market, it's not surprising that to my mind, there are a couple of things about it that aren't perfect and that I would ideally like changed. The thickness of the galvanized steel did mean that a couple of times I ended up cross-threading the screws as I was driving them home. I do like when I'm fixing into plasterboard to get a really good tight fixing. And you know, this was as much as anything learning this product and learning how much I could tighten the screw. If you're using an electric screwdriver or an impact driver, you might do exactly what I did. And I think when you're getting, getting used to this product, it is worth doing the final tighten with a hand screwdriver, or at the very least, set the clutch on your drill driver to a very low level. I think a slightly thicker grade of uh, galvanized steel would help enormously with this. The other thing I noticed today, and this is only really relevant where, like at the end of the video, I was screwing into a wooden batten, I would have all the holes on the front the same diameter as the guide hole at the top. Instead, they've designed all the holes below the larger guide hole so that the screw itself has to self-tap through them. The reason I say that is because, as you can see here on the video, when I tightened the screw, it was biting on the smaller hole below the guide hole. And this is important because it means that the screw couldn't pull the rest of the blade fixer tight against the back of the plasterboard as a result of which I ended up having to use washers. That way the screw was able to rip through 
the hole that I then do its crucial work at the back to tighten up the back of the blade fixer against the plasterboard. And those two issues underline to me what possibly might hold this very clever, innovative little tool back. What do I mean by that? Well, basically what I'm trying to say here is I've had some practice using this now. I've had a pack of 10. By the time I finished my 10th blade fixer, I'd pretty much perfected the art of cutting the hole and inserting the, the blade fixer itself. In a lot of the instruction videos you see uh, on the internet, you're recommended to bend it around your finger. Now clearly when you do that, particularly when you're using 12 mm plasterboard as I was in this video, you do end up with um, a blade fixer that is much thicker than the plasterboard you're inserting it into. This one here that I bent around my finger earlier is about 18 to 20 millimeters now. I found it was much neater when I bent the fixer to the depth of the plasterboard itself. However, you know, swings and roundabouts, that does make it slightly more difficult to insert. So I suppose the point I'm trying to make here is this clever little gadget is going to polarise the DIY community. Some people will absolutely love it and some people will probably hate it because they'll have a couple of bad experiences using it for the first couple of times and then they won't persevere into perfecting what they do with it. And that's the other point really. The more you experiment with this, the more you can come up with clever ways of doing things. The blade fixers work best when you use at least two screws, uh, the original guide screw I guess, and then a screw of much lower down on the actual fixing itself. So for example here where I was fixing a heavy duty picture hook to the wall, I've actually done away with the original guide screw because this is actually the point of vulnerability of the fixer itself. And, and then I've just positioned the screw lower down to anchor it into the strongest part of the fixing at the back and then I could do away with the original guide screw, snap off the fixing on the front and then it could be filled and painted and you've got yourself a really good strong fixing. A little bit of creative thinking can also help to strengthen that palmet board bracket that you saw me fit at the start of the video. Again, it's a lovely strong fitting. It's incredibly strong if you try and lever it up i.e. all the weights pulling out at the bottom, it's not quite so strong if we start to pull it down and I can already see the plasterboard starting to pull away a bit there. Obviously this plasterboard I think is slightly damp because it's been in my garage so it's perhaps slightly unfair to use this as a scientific example but you could double the strength of this by inserting the bracket in the first place upside down rather than the right way up. Obviously being careful to insert the bottom screw, top, the old top screw, now the bottom screw first. That way we've now got all the load pulling against this much stronger part of the blade fixer because obviously the cut is now at the bottom. And I would actually be pretty confident with this bracket now. I'm putting a lot of load on that and it's not coming out. So are blade fixers going to replace the favourite plasterboard fixings in my toolkit, the likes of Fisher UX6 Duo Powers, spring and snap toggles and wall anchors? Well possibly not right now but don't forget I'm not putting up radiators or kitchen cabinets sort of things that this fixing would be very good for. In my day job I tend to put up the smaller more fiddly curtain brackets that I come into contact with a lot are more suitable to a different sort of fixing so it's sort of horses for courses really which is one of the reasons I don't tend to use grip it fixings a lot because they are too wide a diameter for a lot of the brackets that I tend to work with. And the price at the moment is a little bit more prohibitive. You're looking at about 49 pence per fixing on screw fix compared with 24 pence per fixing for spring toggles and and about 24 pence for your typical 5x52 hollow wall anchors. But I will say that there was something I really liked about this fixing. If nothing else, the ease of use simply using a Stanley knife and a screwdriver and a pencil when compared with some of the more specialist tools, fixing tools and drill bits that you need with some of the other plasterboard fixings I've mentioned do make this little fixing quite appealing. And I think with a little bit of honing they can turn what is already quite an interesting product into something that could be really good. So it has been a bit of a long video today. I thought this would be a really short and simple and quick one. But I hope you found it useful or interesting. If you have, please click on the like button below. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.